Hi guys, Claire here, and today we're back to discuss Monster Hunter. The Monster Hunter series has kind of been on the back burner here at Subjectively for a while, but with the new Switch game, Monster Hunter Rise, officially slated for release in March, that Monster Hunter fire has been rekindled and spurred us to take another look at this unique series and its eponymous monsters. In the past, we've gone over the creative process involved in designing monsters from other series, especially Pokémon, many times. In Pokémon, a successful design needs to have a clear personality, be simply understood from a battling standpoint, and, most importantly, a good Pokémon design should look like it could be your friend. There are, of course, many other nuances and even exceptions to these rules across the nearly 900 strong Pokédex — I'm looking at you, Eternatus — but you get the basic gist. However, these rules for success are specific to Pokémon and don't translate to other series. Yeah, this guy is not your friend. The world of Monster Hunter is much more grown up than the world of Pokémon. Gameplay primarily involves slaying giant beasts, making cool armor from said slain giant beasts, and then using that cool new armor to fight and slay even gianter, more beastly beasts, and so on. Monster Hunter's tone and visuals are semi-realistic with fantasy elements, and by your very first mission, you can tell the game designers wanted to create a full experience for players embarking on dangerous hunts. Each monster lives in a very specific wild habitat, which often plays into the combat style of the monster. The whole experience is curated for immersion, and the monster designs reflect this goal. If you're a longtime Subjectively fan, you may remember a previous video Jack made on the subject of imaginative realism and its place in the Monster Hunter series art direction. If you missed it, there's a link in the description if you want to give it a quick watch now as well. In that video, Jack talked about the art of bringing fantasy creatures to life by applying real-life lighting and anatomical principles to non-living creatures. This process, coined imaginative realism by Dinotopia artist James Gurney, is the main reason that many modern fantasy beasts, including the hunts of the Monster Hunter series, look so believable. However, to give the player a challenging experience, the monster designs need to be more than just realistic. The monsters need to look like they're equipped and ready for combat, not a stroll in Amity Square. The Monster Hunter art teams referenced real, living animals, especially predatory animals, combined them with anatomical features of non-living prehistoric creatures and elements of mythology to make the monsters feel alive, but unlike anything here on Earth. By including mythological motifs, the player's duels with these monsters instantly gain an epic feel, and these motifs also open up options for magical or elemental combat mechanics that might have otherwise felt out of place. Unique mechanics, especially ones that can be easily communicated through a monster's anatomy, are one last crucial part of a Monster Hunter hunt design. Every longtime Monster Hunter fan knows to avoid the deadly tail flip attack of the Rathian, the series mascot. However, while this series is known for its steep learning curve, the designers usually try to be fair. To clue in newcomers, the Rathian's tail is studded in sharp, venomous spikes, a clear sign to avoid it. Luckily for the player, by targeting certain parts of their hunt's anatomy, parts of the monster can break in order to prevent it from using certain attacks. For instance, hunters can cut off the Rathian's tail by focusing their attacks on it, eliminating the Rathian's venomous tail strikes and making the rest of the fight much easier. Now, we've gone over the key components that contribute to a great monster hunter monster design. Great MH hunts are big, slightly prehistoric, and have mythological influence. They must belong to the setting of their lair and have anatomical clues to their combat style. So, all this said, how do I make my own Monster Hunter style monster? First, start with a concept. For instance, this recent private commission I took began with the prompt of an agile, semi-aquatic monster. Brainstorm a few ideas. Make sure you come up with a number of sketches that are diverse and explore the base idea uniquely. For instance, I imagined this concept as a bulky brawler, this concept as a slippery ambush predator, and this one as a prey animal with powerful defense mechanisms. Give each concept some specific points of reference to make them feel alive, but don't get hung up on the details. This stage of designing is about getting your ideas out on the canvas. 
Refine your sketch, incorporating multiple points of reference. Expand on your current ideas while maintaining cohesion. Your design should be unique, but not confusing. Make sure the design isn't too balanced and draws the viewer's eye to the most important parts of the design. Remember, in Monster Hunter's intense real-time combat, the player will not be looking for subtleties. My client liked the axe-like tail present in the first sketch I showed them, so that motif persisted through the final design. In earlier design stages, boar imagery had a stronger presence, and the monster was designed around linear charging attacks. But based on their feedback, I ended up taking this design in a different direction. This monster shifted from looking like a bulky omnivore to being more of a lean and nimble predator. I also started referencing Spinosaurus anatomy at this point since it's a very iconic, semi-aquatic, prehistoric predator. Its new fighting style would rely on quickly jumping in, dealing big damage with its claws, horn, and tail, probably creating some kind of bleeding, damage over time effect, and then retreating a short distance while its prey tires out before repeating the process. As you approach the final design, really think about combat mechanics and how they would play out as a hunter fights your monster. Also think about which parts of your monster could be breakable to potentially alter a fight or drop special loot. I think this monster's horn and tusks would be breakable to prevent it from applying bleeding effects, and its tail could be cut off to prevent attacks with its axe-like protrusion. Before you move on to colors, make sure you have a clear mental image of what your monster's habitat and hunting style would be. Is your monster an ambush predator that needs to blend in with dense jungle terrain? Or perhaps a venomous beast covered in bright colors that warn of a deadly poison? Whatever the case, try a couple different palettes out to see what fits best. Initially, I was leaning toward a palette inspired by Cuban crocodile scale patterns, but ended up setting on more subtle colors that would better blend in with a swampy habitat. So now we have a strong concept with specific points of reference. You could stop here, but we're going to take this monster one step further. As I've already mentioned, the Monster Hunter universe aims for immersion. Especially in the newest games, which have the hardware to render realistic lighting and texture, each hunt looks like it truly lives, breathes, and kills. We're going to be rendering detailed scales on this monster so as to communicate which parts of it will be more heavily armored and which parts might be more vulnerable to attack. In my opinion, light and texture are the most important qualities to get right in art that's supposed to look realistic so be sure to have good reference on hand for how light affects different surfaces. In my case, because this monster lives in swampy terrain and is comfortable in water, I tried to give its scales a little extra shine to imply they may have recently been wet. Details, texture, and color are what will bring your creature to life, so be patient in this final design step.
Once the creature was done, I added a loose background and some ambient lighting to really make it feel real. And with that, we're all done. I hope you guys found this demo and commentary helpful, and I hope you also gained a deeper appreciation for the care and attention to detail that goes into the creatures of the Monster Hunter series. I really enjoyed making this video so much that I'm thinking of turning it into a series. If you guys liked this video as well, please let me know in the comments what movie, video game, or TV show's creature designs we should look at next. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss our next upload. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.